teaching and welcome to today's lesson. This is fresh mint that I dried up. Actually, this mint, I planted them in my garden and I, I just cut them yesterday and I, I dried them up all year round. This is what I do. I'll put them in my freezer and I will use them all through. I use it to cook so many things. So we're going to be making them a bono soup and I'm going to be using some of it. Okay? Look at that. Okay. Welcome back to Dr. Nana Akiza's kitchen. Today we are going to be making a, a bono soup. Bono soup. The way my mom taught me is still the same way I'm still making it but with a little bit of a uh, upgrades, I would say. Um, and I also share the mint leaf too, right? Look at it. I pick them out. I pick them out. So these are just the branches left, and I crunch them into this. And this I'm going to save in the freezer. So all through the year I use it. So I'm going to be using some of it here to spice up my obono soup. And the branches, you're not throwing them away. Just gonna put them on a plate like this. Put water, fill it up with water, and boil it in the oven. That I can save in the fridge. Meat is very nice. It will help you for digestion. If you have common cold, you can drink it as tea. You know, so many things have for the digestion, like I said. So you drink it for common cold. As you know, bad bread. So so many things you can use me means for. So today we are going to be making a bonus soup. So I'm going to be using this pot and the major pot. So let's go over the ingredient. This is the obono, the grounded one. These I bought. At the African market. So I just pop it open. This is a special plate I keep for it, so I don't use it for something else, just for that. So I pour it in. The way my mom taught me, this is my red oil. So I just put it in. Make sure it covers it all, okay? I put red oil to cover it. After that, I'm gonna turn on this side of the stove. There's water here, okay? And I'm gonna put the plates and the obono and the red oil inside. This is gonna help me melt it. So the next major part, I'm gonna turn it on. So this is chicken stock, so I'm just going to pour it inside, like that, and these are the things that I'm using. I'm going to be using some of the meat I shared with you before. I have onions, this is part of the upgrade, my mom wouldn't use onion, never, she won't put onion in our abana soup, but I'll put onion because I like the scent and I just like the taste with that. And I have a whole lot of uh, cayenne pepper, which is like the hot pepper. So put as much or as little. In my house, we eat a whole lot of pepper, so I don't have issues with that, including my cakes. So I have crayfish, and I have chicken bouillon, like that. So I'm just gonna lower it inside, okay? And uh, these are the things I'm gonna be using. I have chicken, and I have fish. And uh, one thing I really love the way I make it is I put a whole lot of chicken. And uh, this chicken, this is chicken, boneless chicken breast. I, I bought it on the store, I would air fry it myself, and I cube it. I just cube it. So I just, I don't want it too chunky. I just cube them a lot, and I pour them in the, in the pot. So this is it. So I'm just going to lower it in the pot. So my obana soup, I like it to be very, very thick. So therefore I will allow this to keep, 
to boil now to a certain stage. So this is going to start boiling now. Very easy to make. So that's it. And I'll be back to tell you when it's due for us to put it on the proper. Okay? Alright, I'm back. Okay? So remember I put the grounded up on here and the oil, right? It's completely all melted now. Can you see that? Inside a small pot. But my mom says we put this inside this, but I'm not doing that. So those are the little ones. Okay. So for the big pot, it's completely everything I put is you allow it to start boiling. Then just pour the ogono inside. See the same oil that my mom taught me. I'm still doing it like that. Just a little oil here and there. So you pour everything inside and then you turn it. Ta -da! We have our ogono soup. So the next thing is to just tear it, okay? That's it. That's it. I think one of the reasons why my mom is not actually putting um, the onion is because she really wanted to be drawing. But it will still drop even with that, the way I'm doing it now. Okay? So this is it. So I like this to cook for some more minutes. And then we are done. With what? I'm going to soup. At this time, you don't cover it, so just lower it. So that's what you need to do. Don't cover it, lower it, and I will be back. So, our banana soup is so, so ready. Yeah, see that, and it's thick, also the way I like it. So, just do it the way you want it. It's just a step, always. Just. I make my cooking style very simple, I'm not giving you no measurement, you know, just the steps. That's all that matters to me. And I think that helps too. So, as always, it's real. We just do some. So that's it. This is really real. Remember, it's your kitchen. It's the way you want it. So this is how I do mine. And that's the way I want it. I'm just here to teach you the steps. When I finish here, I'm going to start writing my research. I have a whole lot of work that I'm doing. I'm still writing my book. So, look at that. And it's real. I hope you learned something today from Dr. Nana Akeza's kitchen. This is to show you that no matter how busy you are, you should take out one or two minutes, five, ten, or even one hour to cook. My husband don't eat out. We eat out once in a very blue moon, not even in this COVID time. So I hope you learned something today. And I will be back here to share some other tips with you. Until then. <laughs>